Hi there, I'm Dr. Victoria Mattingly, and this is Better Humans at Work. On this week's episode, I'm joined by Mark Weber, a human capital consultant that helps his clients to think differently about the way risk and reward strategies intersect and enable their business goals and objectives. Mark has spent his career building high-performing teams to solve complex human capital challenges and effectively engage employees and take control of their expenses. He's currently Senior Vice President and Pittsburgh Market Leader at Lockton Companies, a professional services firm specializing in risk management and total rewards advisory. Mark's also the founder of Disrupt HR Pittsburgh. Disrupt HR was built on the belief that all business leaders, not just HR, need to take some risk to stir the pot and to ensure disrupt in order to compete in the global marketplace. He's also a member of the Community Development and Revitalization Committee of Allegheny Conference and recently completed his Scrum and HR training to help incorporate Scrum and Agile principles into his practice. Mark and I talk about what total rewards are and how his work helps improve the human experience at work by giving employees what they need to not just succeed in their job, but to succeed as humans. Without further ado, here's me and Mark Weber talking about how we can use total rewards to improve the human experience at work. Hi there, Mark. How are you today? Uh, Doing good. Fantastic. Here on a beautiful, rainy Pittsburgh day. This typical Pittsburgh spring day. Thank you so much for joining me. I you and I have had some really great conversations in the past about uh, what you do and just, you know, the human experience at work. And so I'm super thrilled to have you on the show today. And let's just jump right in. So you are a human capital consultant. Uh, what drew you to this line of work? What is a human capital consultant? What what drew you to to do work in this space? Yeah, absolutely. That's 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 a a, a great question. Uh, what exactly is a human capital consultant? Um, I guess if I'm if I'm doing it correctly, uh, I help organizations and people leaders to think differently about the way that they uh, you know view their challenges and opportunities, and ultimately to build a better place to work. I love it. And can you explain a little bit more about like that, that relationship between human capital consulting and that outcome of a better place to work? Like what, what does this look like in practice? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we partner with organizations in a couple of different ways, you know, it's, it's, you know, my, my area, kind of most of my background and I guess how I got into this is really kind of with a, a focus on total rewards, mm-hmm. right? So what can we doing, what can we do to help incent people to come in and, you know, do their best and, you know, give us, you know, be, be as productive as possible to ultimately like drive the success of the organization. Um, but I mean, you know, ultimately I, I, I guess to back up, right. So I, I, you know, what drew me into this line of work was just that I like helping people. Um, And it sounds so trite sometimes when I say it, I I hear it myself, right? Um, But I I kind of started a a consulting firm accidentally 20 odd years ago. Um, I was working, I kind of grew up in the restaurant hospitality business. And, um, you know, honestly, I I just saw uh, as I was helping, as I I saw friends who were owners and operators just kind of making you know like similar similar mistakes and you know overlooking certain things and started to say to myself, you know, how could I help them? Um, so again, I kind of like accidentally started a consulting firm, going out and helping them. And the the one place that I kind of we were doing a little bit of everything, right? It was you know finance, it was you know uh, you know menu design and costing, all that fun stuff. Uh, but the thing that I kept gravitating back towards was the idea of you know people are ultimately what you know make organizations successful. And, and, and I saw a lot of the, especially, you know, uh, you know, the restaurant business is not always known to be the best to its people, we'll say. Yes. Um, so I felt like there was this like really great opportunity to focus on figuring out how we, you know, build a better experience through better process, right? Like people come to work, like it should be easy to come to work. Like it shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard. Like yeah. we should have schedules that are more reliable than like the night before. Just basic things like that, but also in in you know the idea that again, like especially in the service industry, people are what ultimately make it a great experience. Yeah. So if you want a great customer experience, 
intrinsically, like the thing that makes the most sense is just to like have a great employee experience. When people are happy, they come to work and they make other people happy. And they just get, you know, they, when, when they're bringing their best selves to work, they're giving them their best selves to their customers. Yes. So like that direct correlation between like employee experience and customer experience to me is probably a lot of what keeps me going. Yes. And, and it's so interesting because you and I have that shared background in service industry and, and, and yours translated to, you know, human capital consulting, mine translated to organizational psychology, but it was me working in the service industry and looking around and, and being like, right. okay, I have horrible bosses, crazy coworkers, drunk customers, and why have I never been given any sort of tools or training on how to deal with such a stressful working environment? Right. Research has shown working in service industry is more stressful than being a surgeon. They have, they have empirically proven that, measuring stress in an objective yeah. way. And so um, that's when I had the big aha. Like I, I, need, I need to go back to school and be this psychologist be this master trainer to, to help train the world to be more emotionally intelligent you know and, it, and it's I, now I'm doing that really narrowly in, in the inclusion space but it's always improving the human experience at work and having that aha as a service industry employee and I love how you talk about the employee experience results in a, a positive employee experience will result in a positive right. customer experience and just having that that human experience at work. And speaking of human experience at work, you mentioned before total rewards. Can you explain a little bit what that means to our audience? Yeah, that, that that's probably another one of those like overused words like engagement, right? Like everybody kind of has like a nebulous idea of what it is. Um, everybody knows that it's supposed to make things like work a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like how we actually quantify it is a little, to me, total rewards, it's, it's, it, the idea of what can we give to an employee to have them bring their best selves to work, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that might be compensation, that might be health and welfare, you know, employee benefits. Um, you know, more and more often, it's, it, it's a focus on, on everything else, right? You know, a whole employee comes to work and we expect a lot of our employees, right? It, a majority of their life is spent, you know, working. Yeah. Um, so they should have a good experience when they do that. That means their physical environment. That means the way that they interact with the people around them and the organization as a whole. Um, so total rewards is like that concept that, you know, we shouldn't be looking at things as just how we pay somebody or just their health benefits or dental or vision or whatever those different things are, but it's really the entire experience and all of the various things that we could do um, to ultimately get people to, to come work for with us and to, to stay and work with us. Yeah, and I feel like what's happening with COVID right now and uh, virtual work and also working parents, like there, there needs to be these supports. We, we have brought out of necessity and out of, you know, we can't go into the office, at least not as often or as regularly as we did pre-COVID. And, and so if I'm bringing work into my home, then, then you need to accommodate me, employer, I, and, and recognize that I'm bringing my, my, my life into work, right? And so it's, it's a give and take. It's a two-way street. And I'm curious, have you seen shifts when it comes to remote work or COVID resources or like working parents in the total reward space as a result of COVID? I would say yes, yes, and yes. Um, yeah, I mean, th there's been a big focus. And, and I think... Uh, especially in the U.S., um, you know, we, we, we do work globally, um, but my focus has tended to be a little bit more on the domestic side, but I've also lived globally, right? Mm -hmm. So I've lived, it, I, I lived in Europe and, you know, it, it is kind of amazing the, the difference in terms of work life, right? Like you know, balance, uh, but that kind of, you know, integration with work and life and that was just exacerbated, right? So like it was a topic of conversation before and it was like, wouldn't it be nice to have something that was like a little more of a human experience again, as we are human beings mm -hmm. that are coming into work <laughs> um, that, that, you know, it, you know it, it, again, is experienced probably almost everywhere else in the world. So that kind of conversation around balance and integration and and you know like what that ultimately means just came to a head this year so I would say that's the biggest point of priority for most of our clients is even if you already had a pretty good idea of what you were doing around you know vacation uh you know PTO generally um you know now it was 
the opportunity to really like think hard about it and yeah. and listen to your employees and what their needs are and start to i mean frankly use it as a differentiator yes. um you know all of a, all and, and and at the end of the day that's that's what total rewards is about it's you know what can we do it was the the the, the post world war 2 introduction of you know uh employee benefits you yeah. know what can we do outside of wages ultimately what you know perks perquisites um always love that word didn't know it was a thing right that's, what is that's it? one of the Did perquisites it? right perquisites. with a q right so like until i started into the reward space you didn't know it like perks yeah get it per but that's a, a different thing but you know it wasn't really until after world war ii when there was you know a kind of the original post world war ii war for talents um, where there started to be, you know, uh, uh, an understanding that uh, wages weren't enough at that point, and we have to do more to ultimately attract and retain talent. In the U.S., and you, I'm really glad you brought yeah. up globalization, right, and the differences um, in and outside the U.S., but in the U.S., benefits or these perquisites, as you said, I love that, um, they're, they're often viewed as perks, right? They're viewed as like a bonus or like a recruitment strategy rather than being foundational to an organization's strategy and objective. So right. why are things like total rewards so crucial to a company's overall strategy? And, and specifically, you know, how does investing in total rewards really impact that, that bottom line ROI? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I would say it's probably not a, uh, a majority of companies that necessarily look at it that way. I feel like there has been a really good evolution, um, to that more kind of foundational approach where you know there's a good understanding of of you know of of the 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 role that you know employer and employee play and frankly i have trouble sometimes working with organizations that don't feel that way to yeah. be completely honest yeah. um you know to me the expectation that organ organizations demand from their employees uh you know, it requires them to invest in their people, right? And and this is just part of the investment, you know, uh, and organizations that understand that just do better. If you take a look at the, you know, the best places to work lists every year, and there's a bunch of them out there, um, you know, all of them, you know, if you, if you take a look at best places to work and, and, and the top performing organizations, the Venn diagram is going to be a, like a perfect circle, right? Yeah. Um, like they listen to their employees, they're transparent in their communications, uh, you know, they do the work to understand, you know, what their employees value, and then they, you know, design their plans accordingly. So that way they can ultimately invest. You have a finite amount of dollars to spend, yeah. right? No matter what the budget looks like, um, you know, even at the Googles of the world, you know, there's still so many, only so many dollars to spend. So they, again, they're like doing the work to understand like how to make an impact with every one of those dollars most effectively. And like I said before, right, it's, you know, happy employees equals engaged employees and that's productive employees, right? It's like, it's a pretty simple equation at the end of the day that I think sometimes is lost. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you're, you're doing work in that space, especially to equip, you know, HR professionals and those who are leading those efforts to make those good decisions and help them realize, you know, the, the ROI of investing in their employees. And so speaking of HR, uh, can you share a little bit about disrupt HR? So this, I, I'm involved in the community. I, I personally love it, but what is dis disrupt HR? What's the purpose of this group? And what are you hoping to achieve by growing and leading this community yeah. here in the Pittsburgh area? I think first and foremost, Disrupt HR is my mental crutch that has got me through the last year. <laughs> um, it's it's like it's like the the community that has supported me to like be able to be here today, ultimately having this conversation. So thank you for being a part of it, first of all. Um, but I mean. Disrupt HR is um, an organization, really kind of like a, a platform. It's global. We're in 180 cities. Oh, wow. uh, I had the opportunity about two years ago to uh, start to organize the the um, chapter, the kind of Pittsburgh chapter of Disrupt HR. And you know, the concept, the fundamental concept, is uh, the the 
Picha Kucha. Uh, it's a Japanese 20 pictures in 20 seconds, except we do 20 pictures in 15 seconds so that it fits a little tighter into our time frame. And then we do events with, you know, 10 to 15 people with these just, you know, like the format just really requires the speakers to really distill their message and make it really impactful. Um, and obviously, you know, the topic of conversation is how we disrupt HR, right? A traditionally, traditionally, the, the most status quo part of an organization, the one that, you know, there's often like the most opportunity for improvement and sometimes is, is, is most lagging. Um, so, you know, the, the, the idea behind Disrupt HR when it was started, I guess we're going on probably 10 years ago was, you know, let's highlight these conversations, let's highlight these voices that, you know, might not be in a position to be doing a 60 or 90 minute keynote uh, or presentation at one of the HR conferences. Uh, this way we can get people on stage and just have like quick little punchy conversations that are fun and engaging. Um, obviously, plans changed last year. Um, we did one live event. We had our second live event teed up and ready to go. We were going to do it at the Hard Rock. Um, I was going to probably do something ridiculous. Uh, so it like robbed me of the opportunity to do that. Uh, <laughs> but then we've, yeah, we've, we've pivoted just like everybody else has. And, you know, we've now done, uh, I think yesterday, uh, based upon when we were filming or uh, when we're taping this was uh, our last event. And we've, you know, getting like 30 to 120 people on a call together on a monthly-ish basis just to connect and talk and share with each other. And, you know, frankly, the, 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 I think the, the benefit that I didn't realize that was going to come of it that I think I'm actually the most proud of, I'll say, is the fact that the, this community came together. We have, again, like hundreds of people now in the market that are regularly engaged with the program that we're doing. Um, but they're working together now, mm. right? They're, 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 I mean, doing things like this, you know, like collaborations and conversations, but like they're doing business together. Yeah. So we got a bunch of like like-minded people that said, we can do better. We can change. And now they're working together to do that. Um, so it's been, I mean, just this incredibly gratifying uh, thing that has kind of, I don't want to say happened to me in the last year or two years, I guess I made, I made my own luck um, to a, to a point, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 you know, we're hoping to just to continue to grow, to continue to get people to engage and invest in the community so that we can, you know, move our profession forward. I love that. And, you know, if you're watching this, you are in Pittsburgh, definitely join the Disrupt HR Pittsburgh group. We'll have the links in the comments. And as, as Mark mentioned, this is a global, Disrupt HR is a global uh, organization. So check out if there's a chapter in your uh, city, wherever you're tuning in from. And you could be like Mark and start your own chapter if it doesn't currently exist. So let him be an inspiration and a role model to you all. Out Call there. me. We can talk about it. Always glad to talk. I love it. So that's Disrupt HR, the organization. But Mark, Disrupt HR as the movement, as, as you know, those who want to literally disrupt HR in their own organization, what are three recommendations you have for those who want to be disruptive in the HR space? Let's see. I think, you know, a couple of these are probably recurring themes. Uh, to me, one, it, be as transparent with your people as you can be. Um, and listen to them. Uh, it's such like a fundamental, it, it seems so counterintuitive that that's something that's disruptive, right? But like the reality is, is that there's still a ways to be able to go to just open communications, you know, much more effectively with our employees and, and listen to their voice. Um, second, I would say use data, right? Like we have all of the data, literally all of it. You know, how are you using it to make your people decisions? Um, and I think third is, um, I, you know, I mentioned it earlier, realize that people are, make your organization successful and make sure that you're investing in them appropriately. I love it. It shouldn't be disruptive, right? That should just be this. <laughs> Again, it's so counterintuitive, right? Like, it should no, no, no. Be, but it is, it really yeah. is. 
this is what changes us you know it, it it's and 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 like honestly it, uh, it's funny when when you when when you ask the question about like human capital consulting that's something that like honestly i struggle with sometimes I, right like the idea of like humans as capital it's like oh is this is this diminishing like the importance of humans by saying they're like an input right but to me it's it's not that definition of capital and i probably stole this from somebody but it, it's 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 not like the idea of capital as in like capital investment it like it is it's your talent investment right like to me like I help organizations to maximize their talent investments. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, that's, uh, uh, the, I think the way that we all need to be looking at things. Absolutely. Oh, we need more people like you in the world, looking at things that way and helping companies look at things that way. So that being said, Mark, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, how, how could people get, get in your sphere in your network? Yeah. So, uh, Every relationship starts with a conversation. That's that's kind of the business that I'm in is the conversation business. So easiest thing to do is connect on LinkedIn, and if it makes sense, let's connect in real life for a chat. It's 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 kind of like it's my lifeblood. It's what keeps me moving. I love it. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your wisdom, your expertise, your energy with us today. It's been an honor having you on the show, and thank you for all you do to help us be better humans at work.